The lesson goal for today is to be able to solve problems similar to this. This one states, translate to an equation and solve. 57 is 6 more than a number. Find the number. First thing we want to do is define the variable. I'm going to say let n equal the number. And now we're going to write the equation. 57 is is your equal sign. The word then is a turnaround word. So we're going to write 57 is equal to n plus 6. Now, since my variable is on the right-hand side, I'll use the symmetric property to write it on my left-hand side. So instead of writing 57 is equal to n plus 6, now I have n plus 6 is equal to 57. I'll subtract 6 from both sides. This will leave me with n is equal to 51. By the end of this lesson, I'll be able to solve equations by adding and subtracting. Our essential question is, how are expressions different from equations? If the amount on the left is the same as the amount on the right, how much is in the chest? You should pause the video and try to figure this out. Since on the chest side, I have two five pieces, which adds up to 10, plus the 10 piece, which is 10. So 10 plus 10 is 20, plus the two single pieces. That will give me the chest plus 22. On my right side, I can see that I have three tens, that's 30, two fives, which is another 10, which is 40, and then 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5, which gives me a total of 45. These two amounts are supposed to be the same, so we can say that they are equal to each other. Now we'll subtract 22 from both sides. This will leave me with the chest having 23. An equation is a mathematical statement that asserts that two expressions are equal. We have the expression x plus 4. We also have the expression 2x minus 5. All we need is the equal sign, which makes them an equation. An expression equal to another expression is an equation. Our goal is to isolate that variable x and have it set equal to a constant. In this particular equation, a is equal to s squared. And this is how we find the area of a square. These types of equations have a special name called formulas. Let's take a look. 6 is the coefficient. x is the variable. Now the equal sign is our balance. And 3 is our constant. When we're simplifying numerical expressions, we use PEMDAS or GEMS. Now to solve equations, we're going to kind of work backwards. So it's going to be like SAB, MEP, or SMEG. Inverse operation undoes the operation. To undo multiplication, you'll divide. To undo division, you'll multiply. To undo subtraction, you'll add. To undo addition, you will subtract. To undo or not to do, that is the question. Similar to to be or not to be, that is the question. This soliloquy was written by William Shakespeare, an act of speaking once stored out loud regardless of any hearers. He was an English poet, playwright, and actor of the Renaissance era. William Shakespeare, often called England's national poet, is considered the greatest dramatist of all time. His works are loved throughout the world. This information on William Shakespeare was found on Wikipedia. Inverse operations. When we undo an operation, we are working backwards to solve the equation. Equations must remain balanced. The goal is to isolate the variable by getting the variable alone with a coefficient of 1 on one side of the equation, such as c is equal to 25. This is like gems in reverse. Reverse, reverse. Let's take a look at this balance. If I add three blocks to my left-hand side, it's no longer balanced. For this to be balanced, I would have to add three blocks to my right-hand side. If I take away two blocks from my left-hand side, it's no longer going to be balanced. I would have to take away two blocks from my right-hand side. If I double my left-hand side, I'm going to have to double my right-hand side so the two sides are balanced. If a pot of gold weighs the same as a barrel of gold, if I add the same amount to both sides, it's going to remain balanced. Same thing is if I take away the same amount, it's still going to remain balanced. Equations. In the word equations, you can see equal. So that means equations must be balanced. To solve, keep them balanced. Whatever you do to one side of the equal sign, you must do to the other side. Let's take a look at the subtraction property of equality, which states subtracting the same number from each side of an equation produces an equivalent equation. If we see the equation x plus 6 is equal to 8, all we have to do is eliminate the plus 6 by subtracting 6, the inverse operation. What undoes addition? Subtraction. On my left-hand side, a plus 6 minus 6 will cancel each other out. This would leave me with x. 
8 minus 6 is 2. Let's take a look at another example. Instead of subtracting 6 from both sides, we're going to subtract 7 from both sides since we're adding 7 to the left hand side. The plus 7 and minus 7 will cancel each other out so we're left with x on the left hand side. 8 minus 7 is 1. You may want to pause the video and try these on your own. All we have to do is subtract 8 from both sides. This is going to leave me on the left hand side. x is equal to 1. On this particular case, we're going to subtract 3.1 from both sides since we're adding 3.1 to our variable. We want to line up our decimals. If a number doesn't have a decimal, it has a decimal at the end of that number. So instead of writing 19, I'm going to write 19.0. On my left-hand side, positive 3.1 and the minus 3.1 cancel each other out, leaving me with just x. And I'm going to have to borrow from the 9. The 9 becomes an 8. And I add 10 to the 0, which makes it 10. 10 minus 1 is 9. Make sure you bring down your decimal. 18 minus 3 is 15. Notice how my equal signs are all lined up. Some prefer to draw a line before they begin to make sure it's nice and neat. If you have any issues with neatness or organization, it's great to put a line down the middle before you begin to solve. So you have the left hand side separated from the right hand side. We're going to subtract four ninths from both sides. Four ninths minus four ninths is zero. So leaving us with x on the left hand side. And five ninths minus four ninths, since the denominators are the same, we could just subtract the numerators and we're left with one ninth. Let's take a look at this one. We're going to subtract three eighths from both sides. Since our denominators are not the same, we're going to try to find our lowest common denominator. The greatest common factor between 12 and 8 is 4. 4 goes into 12 3 times, 4 goes into 8 2 times. That means the fraction with the denominator 12 is going to get multiplied top and bottom by 2. And the fraction with a denominator of 8 is going to get multiplied top and bottom by 3. This gives me 14 24 minus 9 24. 14 minus 9, that's 5 24. Let's take a look at the addition property of equality. Adding the same number to each side of an equation produces equivalent equations. When we take a look at x minus 7 is equal to 8, instead of subtracting 7, we have to do the opposite to undo the subtraction. To undo this minus 7, we're going to add 7 to both sides. The minus 7 and the plus 7 will cancel just like in our previous problems, and this is going to leave us with x is equal to 15. When we take a look at this one, you may want to pause the video and try it yourself. We're going to add 11 to both sides. On the left-hand side, the minus 11 and the plus 11 will cancel each other out, leaving us with x is equal to 18. On this particular one, we're going to add 8.39 to both sides of the equal sign. On the left-hand side, we're just going to have x. On the right-hand side, we'll add a 0 to line up our numbers. 0 plus 9 is 9. 8 plus 3 is 11. Bring down your decimal. 1 plus 2 plus 8 is 11, and 1 plus 1 is 2. Let's take a look at this particular case. We'll add 1 6 to both sides. This is going to give us x is equal to 6 6. This can be reduced to just 1. In this case, we're going to add 1 fourth to both sides. Notice our denominators are not the same, so we're going to have to find the lowest common denominator, or at least a common denominator, but we usually try to find the lowest common by factoring out a 2. 2 goes into 6 3 times, 2 goes into 4 2 times. Now the fraction with a denominator of 6 is going to get multiplied top and bottom by 2, and the fraction with a denominator of 4 is going to get multiplied top and bottom by 3. This will give us 2 twelfths plus 3 twelfths. 2 twelfths plus 3 twelfths is equal to 5 twelfths. Let's take a look at the symmetric property of equality. If A is equal to B, then we can say that B must equal A. In this case, if 5 is equal to x minus 1, then x minus 1 is equal to 5. Notice that I'm sliding. I'm not writing 1 minus x. That would be changing the order. And we learned that the commutative property only works for addition and multiplication, in which the order in which we add or subtract doesn't matter. It doesn't work for subtraction or division, so that would not be the case. This is more like the associative property when we we're sliding our parentheses, so we're just sliding it over. So it still looks like that x minus 1, and now we can read x minus 1 on the left side as well. Now all we have to do is add 1 to both sides, and this gives us x is equal to 6. This is the end of this lesson. I hope you enjoy. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.